absolutely wreaking havoc with something called IEDs. Uh, when I was over there, there were three types of IEDs, maybe four. Uh, they were radio controlled IEDs. There was pressure plates. And there was suicide bombers. And then towards the end of my deployment, deployment uh, they came up with something called HME. That's what we were calling it at the time. Basically, it's a pressure plate IED that they stuff with ball bearings, screws, rounds, anything metal. And these things get so hot in the IED, when they shoot out, they literally go through up armor. Any kind of armor, they fucking buzz right through it and they kill who's ever in the vehicle. Uh, I gotta say, and I, I don't want to say that I respected uh, the, the Taliban or the enemy over there, but these boys could fight. Uh, they adapted to our SOPs, our TTPs, uh, SOPs, Standing Operating Procedures, uh, TTPs are training techniques and something else. I don't know. I've been out of the game for a little while. But we had to adjust our tactics, our fighting style constantly for these guys because these guys would pick up on fucking everything. And I don't know if that had to do with Taliban being in our camp or if just these guys, I mean, keep in mind, these guys fought the Russians. We start running, something that shocked me right away, and keep in mind we're in a dangerous fucking area. We started going on the offense, which is... I mean, to say the least, dangerous. We start doing mounted convoys up and down these roads, and we start being proactive with these guys. I mean, we're fighting every other day, taking contact, small arms fire, mortars, sniper fire. Um, But we're finding these IEDs, and IEDs was their, that was their bread and butter. That's how they were, that's how they were being aggressive over there, and that's how they were actually putting a dent in us. And uh, I learned quick about where they put these things, how they installed them, how they operated, what to look for, and keep in mind, Fucking Afghanistan is littered with trash, littered with uh, vehicles that have been blown up, uh, old missiles, uh, mortar shells, uh, scud missiles. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a boneyard. So looking for these fucking IEDs is not something that's simple. And the Marine Corps tried training us for it, but <laughs> literally, is absolutely next to impossible to, to find these things. Um, keep in mind, we're in a mounted convoy going 40 miles an hour down the road, and our first line of defense is a mine roller on front of our vehicle, and then me, up in the gun. I have to visually look on the side of the road, and keep in mind, I'm in Vic 1, so I'm the first one that's calling out these things that we need to look for to be proactive to try to stop these IEDs absolutely blowing us to hell. Um, also, uh, the, the leader for us was, uh, his name was Captain Donnerstag, and he was always in my vehicle uh, in the shotgun position because he would always be on the comms and reading the Blue Force tracker. And honestly, he was the guy finding these fucking IEDs before I was. Keep in mind, he's in the vehicle. I'm up in the gun. He's making me look like an absolute chump. Stopping the vehicle, getting us out. We're doing five, zero fives and 25s, which is basically over there. The first line of defense against IEDs is zero fives and 25s. It's uh, when you stop and get out of the vehicle, open the door, you look down, you do a canvas around the vehicle, that's zero. You go five meters out, you go around, you're looking for IEDs, and then you go 25 meters out. That's how we basically see if there's anything around the vehicle that we're at. Keep in mind, always when you get out of the vehicle, you close the door. If an IED goes off, takes you out, you don't want it blowing up everybody inside. So there's little things like that that you need to be proactive about.
um, 